Blair's protection of elite pedophile rings spells the end for his career by Mike James, British freelance journalist. I released a video today, December 31st, 2014, the last day of the year. And in that video was mention of the Dunblane Massacre, which the author, Francis Richard Connolly, said was a cover-up mass murder of many Scottish schoolchildren in order to conceal crimes against them. You may have heard about these crimes and now know that the blame goes all the way to the top in government in the West, principally Great Britain and America. The CIA is involved, but you're not going to like what they are doing in this. The FBI is involved in blackmail in order to get Tony Blair to comply with their demands. And I don't like hearing that our governmental agencies are involved in blackmail in order to coerce leaders of other nations to back illegal invasions or decade-long occupations of sovereign Middle East nations in order to rob them of their gold and oil. This is not what I want my government to be about, so I looked up the massacre and found a July 20th, 2006 article about it and I want to read it to you. It won't take long, and it's full of smoke, from which there is bound to be fire, if anyone cares to research it in greater detail. We the people need to know what's going on among this insane group of lawless, homosexual pedophiles, and we need to face the truth here in America as well. We have children vanishing from national parks. The Department of the Interior isn't keeping records on the disappearances, according, according to, to David, David Paulides. Paulides. And this can only mean that our government is involved in pedophile rings, and children are being sexually abused and then murdered in order to keep this quiet. I have heard and read direct testimony from the child victims like Kathy O'Brien and Bryce Taylor, also known as Sue Ford, who said they were forced to be part of a CIA child sex ring, and Bryce Taylor names names like Henry Kissinger and John F. Kennedy, Bob Hope, Mickey Rooney, and Neil Diamond. Personal testimony is admissible in court, so don't be too quick to dismiss it when you consider the facts. These young ladies have their personal testimony, and some boys have theirs as well. I do not wish to try the case here. I only want to read an article published at the Illuminati News. The link is here in my notes and will be published in the video description. You may want to read some of the other articles linked there on the website. Thursday, July 20th, 2006. Blair's protection of elite pedophile rings spells the end for his career by Mike James, British freelance journalist. And there is a photo of Tony Blair on the left. NATO boss and Blair government insider Lord Robertson has threatened to sue Scotland's leading independent newspaper over internet allegations that he not only used his influence as a Freemason to procure a gun license for the child killer Thomas Hamilton, but was also a member of a clandestine pedophile ring reportedly set up by Hamilton for the British elite. On the 13th of March, 1996, Hamilton, armed with four handguns, opened fire on a junior school class, killing 16 children and one teacher before turning the gun on himself, shattering forever the idyllic 13th century Scottish town of Dunblane. There is a photo of Lord George Robertson, born 1946, and he is accused of using his influence as a Freemason to procure a gun license for child killer Thomas Hamilton. And the man on the right there, Lord George Robertson, was also a member of a clandestine pedophile ring reportedly set up by Hamilton, the murderer for the British elite. This story has ramifications which indicate 
that those highest in the British government are guilty of running a pedophile sex ring and then murdering the children when they were through with them. The evidence revealed in this article should be known by every citizen of the world so they know what happens to missing children sometimes. When we have a homosexual living in the White House with a man dressed up like a woman, pretending that they are a family when the truth is they are two men and the children were adopted and that no one ever saw the queen, I'm talking about Michael, pregnant, then we in America are as much in the dark as the rest of the world about what's going on in our country and in the West at the highest places. True leaders don't run child sex rings, and pedophilia is considered unacceptable among those in leadership positions. When pedophiles are at the top of governments, it is decadence. And Tony Blair used every power available to him to help cover up the pedophile crimes. The next paragraph says, The controversy is certain to topple the Blair government, which has already issued a D-notice to gag the press from revealing the names of known pedophiles within the British executive, including at least two senior ministers, and the case highlights the government's antipathy toward the Sunday Herald and its brand of independent journalism that has, among other things, exposed the role played by the domestic security agency MI5 in helping IRA to carry out terrorist atrocities. As reported by this journalist last month at Propaganda Matrix and Counterpunch, and by the Sunday Herald's home affairs editor, Neil Mackay, the British intelligence services are actively engaged in preventing any further child sex revelations that could incite further hostility to an already unpopular prime minister and destroy the morale of troops set to invade Iraq. An intelligence officer told McKay that a rolling cabinet committee had been set up to work out how to deal with the potentially ruinous fallout for both Tony Blair and the government if arrests occur. So, in other words, they got away with it. Not as long as I'm around, because I'm going to read the old articles and expose the pedophile rings and the murder of innocent children because nobody is standing up for them. This has all been swept under the carpet, and I want to open the carpet and let everyone see the dirt because this is who government is. This is what government does. This is how power corrupts. An infinite power corrupts them completely. They are insane. They are homosexuals. And they prey on little kids. And then they murder defenseless kids with guns. And if that's okay with you, then do nothing. Next paragraph. Some commentators mindful that one of Tony Blair's closest confidants is a practicing pedophile are even suggesting that this particular scandal, and not Blair's repeated lies and fabricated reports in regards to Iraq, may well prove the downfall of a government mired in sleaze and corruption. The Sunday Times is reported to have obtained an FBI list of labor MPs who have used credit cards to pay for Internet child pornography, and Blair has responded by imposing a massive news blackout, failing, however, to stop the arrest of one of his most important aides, Philip Lyon, L-Y-O-N. The latest allegations came to light following a campaign to lift the secrecy on the Dunblane massacre. Large sections of the police report were banned from the public domain under a 100-year secrecy order. Lord Cullen, an establishment insider, also omitted and censored references to the documents in his final report. Parents and teachers were advised to concentrate their efforts 
on a campaign to outlaw handguns instead of focusing on how the mentally unstable Freemason, already known by the police to be a pedophile, had obtained a firearms license for six handguns. Never let a crisis go to waste. Use the crises here not to expose the pedophile ring, but to turn the public against handguns. Hamilton allegedly enjoyed good relations with both local labor luminary George Robertson and Michael Forsyth, the then Scottish Secretary of State and MP for Stirling. Forsyth congratulated and encouraged Hamilton for running a boys club. Hamilton was also found to have exchanged letters with the British monarch Queen Elizabeth. The rumors and allegations concerning Lord Robertson's ties to Hamilton and the possibility that the American intelligence services may be blackmailing Tony Blair into continued support for a U.S. invasion of Iraq have been given fire by Internet investigator and intelligence expert Michael Keeney. And then the next paragraph is one huge quote which reads, An additional and potentially explosive aspect of U.S. leverage over Blair is the FBI's investigation of users of child porn websites, which has already claimed a number of high-profile scalps. The biggest two fish that come to mind are indeed high-profile. Firstly, there is George Robertson who today has announced that he will step down as NATO Secretary General after four years and two months on the job. Were he to be fingered, the fallout would be spectacular but short-lived. He's been a long time out of the cabinet and is sufficiently distant from Tony to be regarded as not requiring the presidential finesse of a rolling cabinet committee whatever that might be. However, our second candidate is most certainly very closely identified with the Prime Minister and retains a high profile and continues to operate at a very high level indeed, whether in Europe, Japan, or even the Middle East. And then there's a photo of Peter Mandelson. Peter Mandelson began political life as a member of the Communist Party, soon seeing the light and instead getting involved with the CIA-slash-MI6-financed Socialist International Youth Wing and the Labour Party, through which he rose in parallel with his experience working at London Weekend Television with other A-list regulars like John Burt and Michael McClay. Now public mouthpiece of Hakluyt, H-A-K-L-U-Y-T, the private Spectre spook outfit run by a bunch of ex-MI6 types, including the widow of ex-labor leader John Smith. This sort of background and connections makes Mandelson very useful in the sort of corridors and alleyways diplomacy and networking that is the real substance of international relations and intelligence gathering. If Mandelson is indeed the suspect, then the damage this could cause may fatally wound Blair. And that's the end of the quote. There's another quote beginning in the next paragraph. It looks like all of these paragraphs are quotes. An interesting development that may or may not be related to this is the publication of an article in last Sunday's Observer by David Aronovich. He and Mandelson are longtime friends, having been together in the Communist Party and at London Weekend TV. Aronovich was, until recently, a leading political commentator for The Independent, on whose International Advisory Board the standard vanity collection of August persons put together for the ego of the newspaper proprietors like Tony O'Reilly and Conrad Black sits Peter Mandelson. A lot of these allusions, the author is alluding to one person or another, who are probably well known in Europe, but we in America don't know these names. They are not familiar to us. I will continue reading anyway. The next paragraph, in quotes, Since switching to the Guardian Media Group at the beginning of this year or thereabouts, Aronovich authored an article on child abuse in which he pleads for common sense to prevail rather than the lynch mob. 
And then there's a quote inside this paragraph, and that quote is, Strangely, I trust the police to act sensibly because, like the analysts, they've seen it all. It's the rest of us I worry about. And that's the end of his quote, and that's the end of the paragraph quote. The next paragraph has an opening quote, but no closing quote. So I'm not sure where the, the quotation ends. I'll read it anyway. That much depends upon the behavior of the U.S. Justice Department, which ultimately has responsibility for the investigation, must be a worry for Blair. One need only imagine how this must color the views of John Ashcroft regarding the moral fiber of British cabinet ministers and the laxity of the prime minister who chose them in the first place. How easy would it be for the suspect to be named in a story that miraculously surfaced outside the UK, thereby circumventing the D-notice and leading potentially to a rerun of the spycatcher fiasco of 1987? I'm not familiar with that case, but if defenseless children are involved, I will be reading it. And I want everybody to look up the name Ted Gunderson, former FBI chief, who investigated crimes against children after he retired and found CIA connections to the McMartin preschool trial, a trial that lasted five years in California. It was at the time the longest trial in history. Ted Gunderson is now dead. Is his death related to what he uncovered and spoke openly about? You decide. Next paragraph, there is a starting and ending quote and it includes the entire paragraph. Whoever is on the suspects list, we can see that already this rolling cabinet committee is busy leaking stories that serve at least to delay the shock of the inevitable, eventual revelation, buying valuable time if nothing else. Thus you can depend on the guardian to save the day for Tony. And here's some helpful tip-offs courtesy of MI6, that help to distract from what's really going on whilst bolstering the reputation for integrity and financial propriety that has marked Blair's dealings with business people like Bernie Ecclestone, Richard Desmond, Lakshmi Mittal, etc. And then they have a class photo of the Dunblane school children, including the teacher. I presume that these are the kids that were murdered by Hamilton. The next paragraph is in quotes beginning and ending. I have come to the considered conclusion, says the correspondent of Keeney, William Paul Freeman, P-A-L-F-R-E-M-A-N, that the events surrounding the Dunblane massacre and the subsequent submissions to the Cullen inquiry that have been put under to 100 years of secrecy far outweigh in political significance issues such as our opposition to the EU and what it entails. Before I read the next sentence, I want to say something. It appears that the nations of Europe were forced to join the EU. Now, who would have done that? Who wanted to put all of these countries under one roof for control purposes? The people who control them are not elected. That's totalitarian government. And it's tied to child murderers and those who force little kids to do things against their will and then murder them to cover it up. If it isn't clear by now that we need to disengage from all super states, drop out and form our own local government that won't be rife with pedophile stories, then I'll keep reading in hopes that you will finally see the light, see the wisdom of secession, because government is corrupt to the core and everything they do is criminal. And the crimes can only get worse as the power increases. And sooner or later, you're going to have to abandon all super states and drop out. And it looks very likely that Germany is going to leave the EU. And if Germany leaves, it is the powerhouse. It is clear from this article that Great Britain was threatened, coerced, intimidated, blackmailed in order to join the EU. I'm going to read the last sentence again. 
I have come to the considered conclusion that a correspondent of Keeney, William Palfreyman, that the events surrounding the Dunblane Massacre and the subsequent submissions to the Cullen Inquiry that have been put under to 100 years of secrecy far outweigh in political significance issues such as our opposition to the EU and what it entails. He's making a connection here between the massacre of children and Great Britain's opposition to joining the EU. If you notice, the Great Britain pound still exists. It has not been replaced by the euro. And I think it's very likely, based on what I know and have read and heard others discuss, that Germany will return to the Deutschmark and they will drop the euro and they will drop out of the European Union. It took the organizers, this criminal bunch of blackmailers and murderers, a decade to put that super state together. And this report about the massacre of innocent children is connected to the blackmail and coercion of Great Britain's leader, Tony Blair. And what is the tool they're using to operate? It's the CIA and the FBI. Our government agencies are involved in putting together super states for whose benefit? You have to ask yourself, who benefits? Qui bono? Who benefits from this? You always have to ask, qui bono? Who benefits by this action? In 9-11, who benefited in the destruction of the reputation of Muslims? Who benefited? That's your murderer. There are two simple ways to find the truth. Qui bono? Who benefits is one of them. And the other, you've already guessed it, follow the money. Follow the money trail. It will lead you to all the answers you're looking for. You'll see all the connections. Just follow the money. And ask the question, qui bono? Who benefits? Let's continue, and I'll finish this paragraph. It is inconceivable that Tony Blair, Jack Straw, and Gordon Brown can survive in office as this matter becomes known. It totally undermines the Labour government and could easily be a case of the Queen feeling she has to use reserve powers to call an emergency general election. Such would be the loss of confidence. That ends the quote for the paragraph. Next paragraph, a very important quote, mentions two U.S. presidents, Defense Secretary, Secretary General of NATO, and the entire paragraph is one huge quote which reads, This scandal is far more important than anything that has happened here in living memory. In fact, I can think of no parallel for it. It certainly pisses all over anything that happened to Kennedy or was done by Nixon. I'm surprised, given the gravity of this matter, that an attempt has not yet been made on his life, for surely we are dealing with desperate people here. It also explains a few strange things, such as just why Tony Blair and company were so keen to ban all handguns and why such obviously talentless nobodies like George Robertson have risen from being backbench nobodies a couple of years ago to defense secretary and now secretary general of NATO. That paragraph really gets into the guts of it, doesn't it? You know, NATO is breaking apart. Germany had their gold stolen. The sanctions against Russia will cripple all of Europe, and that's intentional, because the object here is to conquer Europe and take it. And who's behind it? Those who control the U.S., the Congress, the puppet president, clearly the CIA and FBI, and NATO. They put in their man in NATO for what purpose? Control. <laughs> control. And the whole coalition is falling apart because of the exposure of these crimes, the theft of the gold, the sanctions against Russia. All of this stuff is related to the rest of the stuff. It's all one big conspiracy to take over the world. They used these pedophile rings in order to get control of people. No politician wants to read in the newspaper about him having sex with an underage person, male or female. And so they blackmail them. This is the way they operate. And they use our CIA and our FBI as a tool 
for their conquering of the world and organizing super states. In order to resist them, we have to resist the super states, expose the truth about these pedophile crimes, murders, and in the case of George Robertson, promoting him up the ranks to Defense Secretary and then Secretary General of NATO. Is this who you want at the head of NATO? It pays to know what's going on. Even if everybody around you doesn't know, it still pays to know what's going on because you can put all the pieces of the puzzle together and understand everything almost. There are some things that are so insane, nobody could understand why they do them. I'll tell you how serious it is. Adolf Hitler criticized priests in Nazi Germany for molesting boys. They weren't throwing them off a boat called Morning Cloud and drowning them. They weren't murdering them with guns, 16 at a time, including the teacher. They were merely molesting boys. And Adolf Hitler, one of the world's most awful human beings that ever lived, criticized those priests for molesting boys. And what do we have today? We have a leadership that's running child pedophile rings and murdering the kids. Is it time for change? What do you think? Okay, let's go on to the next paragraph. It is all in quotes again. Now, where in this is there a national security risk so great that documents, part of the public inquiry, are now state secrets to be held for a hundred years? Well, the obvious answer to that question is they're covering it up because they don't want the truth to be known. And what do the people do in order to fight back? You think you're powerless? Spread the truth. You're not powerless. If 7.3 billion people looked for the truth, found it like this article, and then spread the truth, we could kick their asses all over this planet. Now, come on, people. Set up a channel on YouTube. It's easy. Put some videos there. I don't copyright my material. Find something I did and use it. You're welcome to it. But I cannot speak for other channel hosts because some of them want to protect their work. I don't. I just want the truth out and I don't need any publicity. I don't need to be famous at my age, 63. I see kids here being murdered and I want to do something. So I'm reading the article from 2006. So let me start over and I'll read that sentence again. Now, where in this is there a national security risk so great that the documents that are part of the public inquiry are now state secrets to be held for a hundred years? Funny kind of public inquiry, don't you think? The public inquiry is to dig up the facts so we today know what's going on. And what do they do? They sweep it under the carpet for a hundred years using executive order. Next sentence. Why, when Thomas Hamilton's application for a gun license was turned down, due to him being regarded as a man of unsound character and him being the object of several pedophilia investigations, did this MP, our friend George Robertson, now Lord Robertson, Secretary General of NATO, write him a glowing character reference and personally see to it that his application was successful when he knew the grounds for the original refusal were because he was suspected of procuring boys for sexual services. Next paragraph. Or take a certain boat seized on Loch Ness, Loch Lomond, by the Strathclyde police. It is a very rare thing for assets to be seized in the UK, as there are no asset forfeiture laws. When it does happen, there is normally a trial, at least, with things only being seized if they are proven to be bought, with money proven to be consequence of a proven crime. Even then, they are sold by public auction. How come, then, was this very valuable boat sold for the tiny sum of 5,000 pounds without any auction to none other than our friend Thomas Hamilton, a man of no financial means whatsoever, nor a sailor, nor lived anywhere near any open water? Why did not the boat's owners complain about having their property stolen from them in this manner? I can only conclude because it was being used for some very serious criminal activity, and those on board were merely glad to escape prosecution. 
Also, it seems rather odd in such circumstances that not only were the owners happy to avoid prosecution enough to lose a valuable boat, but that the Strathclyde police were not willing to prosecute. And yet, after these improbable events, it would wind up in none other than our friend Hamilton's hands. Could he have been a blackmailer as well as a pedophile? Next paragraph, all in quotations. But the main thing is what might explain sections of the public inquiry are now under the 100-year rule. There are only three levels of secrecy in the UK for state secrets, the 30-year rule, the 80-year rule, and the 100-year rule. Normally, secrets like cabinet discussions, government papers, espionage, all that are under the 30-year rule. Only a very small number of things ever reach the 80-year rule, particularly events in the Sudan with Kitchener in 1902, where it seems that an act of genocide was committed and some things that happened 1914 to 1918, as well as things like potential peace negotiations in 1941, and just about everything to do with the IRA, after all, people are still alive after 30 years, come under the 80-year rule. Of them, the darkest of state secrets, when the events of 02, that's 1902, were getting a bit close to their limit for comfort, a further class of secrets was created to last a hundred years, and a tiny number of things were put in it. Example, Kitchener in 1902, some World War I things. So whatever is going on is so serious that it has to be put into this group that a tiny, tiny, tiny number of events, crimes, are put in. And it has to do with pedophilia, people in government, sex rings, crimes against children, including murder. And then the author writes, without quotations, but none of these things can be said to apply to Dunblane. That was the case of common criminal and sexual pervert committing some fairly ordinary murders of a kind that happen from time to time. Even if a backbench labor MP was implicated or may have been involved in a large pedophile ring in Scotland, that is not a matter of vital national importance. You have a prosecution, there is a bit of scandal, everyone is disgusted, and one MP goes to prison. Big deal. Such things happen. You certainly would not make such information a state secret just to save one unnamed backbench nobody's miserable neck. Governments simply don't go to such extreme lengths to save nobodies. Power broking just doesn't work like that. There must be issues of profound national importance working here. And I put it to you that anything that involves certain events in Scotland is more likely to be someone of cabinet level than anything else. I'm going to interject my opinion here for a minute and my commentary. If you have a conspiracy of a handful of people who are trying to superstate the entire world, gather up all small nations and put them all under one umbrella, and then have decisions made by someone you have total control of, that's what we have in the USA. We have 545 people representing 323 million people, and the people that are being represented feel they're not being represented and that they have nothing whatsoever to say about any of the laws that are being passed. This is a move toward totalitarian control not only of America, but the world. The organization of Europe into a superstate called the European Union was done in order to consolidate power and control. And now they join the U.S. with the U.N. and the U.N. decides when the U.S. goes to war. If you don't like this direction, you have to do something. Whatever you can, just think of something. Talking to your friends is not going to cut it. You can only talk to them for a while before they say, Stop. I don't want to hear this anymore. You're a nut. The best thing to do is set up a channel on YouTube and read articles if you can. And if you can't, mine are available to you. Put them up on your site. You don't have to give me credit. I'm not interested. Find other people who have good videos and ask them if you can put theirs up on your channel. And that's how we spread the truth. We want to bring down this totalitarian dictator that thinks he's got it all wired. 
And he's got total control of the CIA, the FBI, MI5, and all the cabinet members are blackmailed. The prime minister is being blackmailed. And the 100-year rule is being called upon to cover up what's behind the curtain. And this is the iron curtain that we all feared. I think Churchill coined that phrase. It is an iron curtain, totalitarian control of the entire world. And China and Russia are in on it. Don't ever think that they are adversaries. They are partners in this. And they think they're going to outsmart the world dictator and wind up on top of the entire world in total control of everybody. And then they can take any children they want and do whatever they want and kill them after they're done. I don't want to see this planet going in that direction. And so I pick up a microphone and start talking. The author has written another paragraph after that one, and the tail end of it is under quotes. Let me see if I can find where the quote starts. I cannot. I will assume that the entire paragraph is under quotation, but someone did not proofread this, and so I cannot tell you where the quote begins. It probably begins before the word if. If the physiologically flawed, although Thomas Hamilton, I can't understand this sentence. If the physiologically flawed, although Thomas Hamilton was, these were the words of Tony Blair when speaking of Gordon Brown. I think the word using is not there. Let me read it with using and see if it makes any sense. If the physiologically flawed Thomas Hamilton was the center of pedophile ring in Scotland that procured boys to people of the highest rank, and Tony Blair and Jack Straw covered this up by the Official Secrets Act, they would do the covering as both the Prime Minister's and Home Secretary's permission is needed to put something under the 100-year rule. It is hard to see how they or their close colleagues could possibly remain in office even if they were never inclined to such flawed behavior themselves, the government would fall. Back to that missing word. If the physiologically flawed Thomas Hamilton, and the author puts in brackets, although Thomas Hamilton was using these words of Tony Blair when speaking of Gordon Brown. I don't know what that reference is all about. Apparently, he was quoting Tony Blair when speaking of Gordon Brown. If you know what that is all about, you'll have to leave it in the comments for us to understand because this author did not construct a very good paragraph. It sounds like someone who is being interviewed and he's just rambling out all the information without proper sentence structure or review. Proofreading catches these mistakes and the writer realizes that he has written a sentence or spoken a sentence that doesn't make any sense. If you were listening to him, maybe you would get the idea, but it's very poor sentence construction and difficult for someone to read aloud. I read this article in its entirety before reading it on recording, and still I can't get through the paragraph easily. Next paragraph. That prospect seems to be energizing a government now considered to be fighting for its political life, even to the extent of killing the review process by which some of the banned sections of the Cullen Report would be made public, arguing that freedom of information would somehow harm other abused children in Dunblane. No, it will harm the murderers and the pedophiles and the CIA and the FBI who are blackmailing people and have set up this sex ring or investigated it and discovered it and are using it for their own selfish purposes of setting up super states for total control of the world. Now, if everybody on the planet knew this, you can see that they would drop out of everything. We'd fire the federal government and tell them to go get a real job and stop being parasites off the rest of us. We would end all the wars that we don't need, that cost way more than we can afford, and have caused the downfall of America. The insanity must stop somewhere. It will stop sooner if everybody on the planet knows the truth. The truth is vital to correction, getting us back on the constitutional track, and ending the plans for one world government, the new world order. 
People in government always make excuses like they're thinking of the families or other abused children in Dunblane. This is all bullshit. This is what you give the public to distract them. I've had many people tell me that I should leave 9-11 alone for the families of the victims. No, no, I want to pursue this for the families of the victims and the rest of us who were victimized and lied to and laws were passed in order to get control of us. I block people who say that I am hurting the families of the victims. The victims' families want the truth. Why wouldn't they want the truth? Someone murdered their loved one. They want the truth revealed. If there is a conspiracy, they want it exposed and the government toppled. And when I say government, I'm not talking about these puppets and clowns in Washington. They aren't even close to being the government. They're just up there like fools. The real power structure is behind the scenes. You don't know the names. You don't know the faces. And that unelected government never changes unless someone dies. They remain in control, and they're putting together super states, and we have to be aware of it. All right, there's not much to go in this article. Let's continue. In a recent interview with The Guardian newspaper, Michael Matheson, the Scottish National Party's shadow deputy justice minister said, there are more documents covered by the 100-year rule than this police report. Some of them have nothing whatsoever to do with children. We need to look at why such a lengthy ban has been imposed on them. I have been contacted by a number of families affected by the tragedy who are anxious to ensure that this information becomes public. And so far, we have no guarantee that it will. We only have a review. Then they have a picture of Jack Jack McConnell, First Minister of Scotland. And then a quote. The quote is, It is important we make available, if at all possible, any information that is available about people in the public eye, said the Scottish First Minister, Jack McConnell. And I would add, as reader of this article, that we need to put the cameras on them. and We need to monitor them 24-7. We want to know everything they do as our representatives. And that will cure a lot of problems in Washington. Every single person who represents other people must be tracked with an RFID chip and wear a microphone to record every word. Because as soon as you let them escape, the recordings don't have to be made public. They can be reviewed by a committee of we the people. We choose our representatives to go there and review the recordings. Now, you've got 51% of the people working for the government already. What's a few more? A few more thousand? A few hundred thousand? It doesn't matter. Because the way we're going, everybody will be owned and working for the government very soon. The crimes will only get worse. Currently, they're running child sex rings, providing services to pedophiles, and some of those services include murder. And we the people have to know about it and we have to do something. Next paragraph. When Tony Blair took office, following a landslide victory in 1997, few commentators would have suggested that this man would be willing to drag his country into a war of unjustified aggression against the people that have done no harm to the British public. Nor would anyone have surmised that a labor government would hitch its political fortunes to a shabby cabal of financial neoconservative Zionists working to make real their much-touted biblical Armageddon. And no one could have predicted that Blair's nominally Christian administration would transform itself into a licentious club of flamboyant homosexual cruisers and out-of-control pedophiles. That is a well-constructed paragraph. I like the way this author attacked Tony Blair. Next paragraph. But it is now becoming shockingly clear that the slavish adherence of Tony Blair and Jack Straw to the Bush line on Iraq may have less to do with principled arguments and more to do with the fear of CIA and FBI revelations that would make them two of the most hated politicians in modern British political history. Well, folks, that paragraph reveals that the CIA and FBI were used by Bush to force Tony Blair and Jack Straw to cooperate with the invasion of Iraq. 
a country that posed no risk whatsoever to the British. And the last sentence in the article says, There is only one way out for Tony Blair, resign. And then in parentheses, he says, The British Labor Government, 1997 to 2003, rest in peace. Well, I remember when Tony Blair backed the invasion of Iraq. And one would think that he fully supported it. He's a damned good liar. But what he was actually doing was caving in to threats by the CIA and FBI that certain facts would be revealed to the public to make them the two most hated politicians in modern British political history, Tony Blair and Jack Straw. And who was pushing the coercion? George Dummy Bush. The one who made a Nazi salute while standing in front of the American flags. That's it for this article. Thanks for listening. Blair's protection of elite pedophile rings spells the end for his career by Mike James, British freelance journalist. I released a video today, December 31st, 2014, the last day of the year. And in that video was mention of the Dunblane Massacre, which the author, Francis Richard Connolly, said was a cover-up mass murder of many Scottish schoolchildren in order to conceal crimes against them. You may have heard about these crimes, and now know that the blame goes all the way to the top in government in the West, principally Great Britain and America. The CIA is involved, but you're not going to like what they are doing in this. The FBI is involved in blackmail in order to get Tony Blair to comply with their demands. And I don't like hearing that our governmental agencies are involved in blackmailing and children are being sexually abused and then murdered in order to keep this quiet. I have heard and read direct testimony from the child victims like Kathy O'Brien and Bryce Taylor, also known as Sue Ford, who said they were forced to be part of a CIA child sex ring, and Bryce Taylor names names like Henry Kissinger and John F. Kennedy, Bob Hope, Mickey Rooney, and Neil Diamond. Personal testimony is admissible in court, so don't be too quick to dismiss it when you consider the facts. These young ladies have their personal testimony, and some boys have theirs as well. I do not wish to try the case here. I only want to read an article published at the Illuminati News. The link is here in my notes and will be published in the video description. You may want to read some of the other articles linked there on the website. Thursday, July 20th, 2006. Blair's protection of elite pedophile rings spells the end for his career by Mike James, British freelance journalist. And there is a photo of Tony Blair on the left. NATO boss and Blair government insider Lord Robertson has threatened to sue Scotland's leading independent newspaper over internet allegations that he not only used his influence as a Freemason to procure a gun license for the child killer Thomas Hamilton, but was also a member of a clandestine pedophile ring reportedly set up by Hamilton for the British elite. On the 13th of March, 1996, Hamilton, armed with four handguns, opened fire on a junior school class, killing 16 children and one teacher before turning the gun on himself, shattering forever the idyllic 13th century Scottish tale, in order to coerce leaders of other nations to back illegal invasions or decade-long occupations of sovereign Middle East nations, in order to rob them of their gold and oil. 
This is not what I want my government to be about. So I looked up the massacre and found a July 20th, 2006 article about it, and I want to read it to you. It won't take long, and it's full of smoke, from which there is bound to be fire, if anyone cares to research it in greater detail. We the people need to know what's going on among this insane group of lawless, homosexual pedophiles, and we need to face the truth here in America as well. We have children vanishing from national parks. The Department of the Interior isn't keeping records on the disappearances, according, according to, to David, David Paulides. And this can only mean that our government is involved in pedophile reign of Dunblane. There is a photo of Lord George Robertson, born 1946, and he is accused of using his influence as a Freemason to procure a gun license for child killer Thomas Hamilton. And the man on the right there, Lord George Robertson, was also a member of a clandestine pedophile ring reportedly set up by Hamilton, the murderer for the British elite. This story has ramifications which indicate that those highest in the British government are guilty of running a pedophile sex ring and then murdering the children when they were through with them. The evidence revealed in this article should be known by every citizen of the world so they know what happens to missing children sometimes. When we have a homosexual living in the White House with a man dressed up like a woman,